Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library and I'm at our downtown Lancaster location and today we're here to talk about some spooky horror books. Yay! So last week I talked about some books that just happen to have some spooky content in them. Well these I think qualify as actual horror so buckle in your seatbelt and let's get started. Our first one is called Living Ghosts and Mischievous Monsters, Chilling American Indian Stories. It's written and selected by Dan Sasawit Jones of the Punkum Nation, and it's illustrated by Weshayot Alvitre of the Tonga Nation. And these are traditional stories and modern ones, and some of them are just kind of chilling, but some of them are downright scary. So there's something for everyone in this collection along with some really cool cultural details so non-indigenous readers can also fully appreciate what's going on in them and there's also really cool art throughout so this one's really awesome if you like scary stories to tell in the dark and those sorts of books give this one a try it's really awesome the next one i was so excited when this came out this has one of been one of my favorite series from the last few years this is called Dark Waters. It's by Catherine Arden. It's the third book in a series. In the first book, it's called Small Spaces. You meet the smiling man. And you learn to be careful who you make deals and promises with, and you will never look at scarecrows the same way again after reading Small Spaces. The second book is called Dead Voices. And the kids in that book, they're trapped in a haunted hotel with all of the snowed into a haunted hotel tropes that you expect there to be. like spirit boards, Ouija boards, and mirrors, and all sorts of other things. This book, the kids are dealing with the lake monster, Champy, that lives in Lake Champlain, and um, they wind up stuck on a deserted island, and so it's partly a survival story. They're running from this giant preternatural snake thing. It's really cool. But are they alone on the island? And how are they going to get off of it? It's really awesome. It does end on a cliffhanger, just as a warning, but the fourth book should, with any luck, be out soon. What I love is that there's three main narrators for all three of the stories. Ollie kind of narrates the first one. Coco takes the lead for the second one. Brian finally takes the lead in this one. And all of the kids' voices are very distinct, and they're really cool people. And I can't wait for the fourth book. I really hope it's soon. The last book is one that I'm still in the process of reading because I always like to share the books I'm still reading, and it's called Othi's Ghosts. It's by Justina Ireland, who's the best-selling author of the Dread Nation series, and the year is 1922, and Ophelia, or Ophi, is 12 years old, and she learns that she can see ghosts the night that the last night that she sees her father, he comes to warn her and her mother that they need to run away from their house before white men from town come to burn their house to the ground because he went out and voted and they didn't like that. And then she realizes that it wasn't her dad she saw, but her dad's ghost. And that is the opening chapter of this book. And then she and her mom have to move from Georgia to Philadelphia. Ophi has to quit school and start working at the same big fancy white person's house that her mom's working out and it is just full of ghosts. She's seeing them everywhere, and that's about as far as I have gotten. But it's a mystery story, it's spooky, it's already sending chills up my spine, and I cannot wait to see what happens ne next. The historical details are awesome, and so is the writing. So, there is something here for everyone to enjoy and appreciate, and remember the library's got oodles more. So come on down anytime. I hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody!